G'day, welcome to Mount Cranberry Apiculture. It's Friday, 17th of May, 2024. Just wanted to do a little bit of a recap on how things are going. I, I've really struggled to make videos lately. It's just been so busy and um, the weather's been incredibly wet. Um, it's just rained and rained and rained in the mid-north coast non-stop. We had a little bit of dry weather early this week, but it's still overcast and threatening rain. Very hard to work bees in these conditions. They just are so robby. Um, there's nothing in the, in the way of nectar coming out of the bush here at all. And yeah, you open a couple of hives and they're just at each other. So it's really, um, really difficult to work bees here at the moment. Uh, there's 60 hives, roughly 60 hives, depending on the day. Um, in this site here. So as you can see, it's 99% Hive IQ gear. Um, I'm just so grateful to Hive IQ for giving me a great deal on this gear. Um, it looks fantastic, the bees love it, and I'm really, really grateful that I've could kick off again with this, with this equipment. So yeah, I'm just extremely grateful to Hive IQ and, and also to the people that helped me out with the GoFundMe campaign that that my friend Guy Bertram got going after I, I lost all my bees up at Nimboida. Um, so yeah, um, just so grateful that I've got, got to this stage again with 60 hives. So um, I think I'll leave it at, at that for a little while. Um, Varroa's knocking on our door here. There was a new detection of Varroa between here and Grafton about a, a week, half, fortnight ago. So it's sort of a, one that came a bit out of the blue. Um, it, it could have been connected with the Bacundry incursion which sort of was picked up last year um, so it could have come out of that or it just could have come out of some beekeeper bringing bees into the blueberries up there so unknown but it was yeah a confirmed detection of Varroa probably 25 minute drive from here so really am preparing to to have Varroa here very soon I've been washing these bees like crazy. Um, nothing detected yet. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it's not here. So one of my biggest losses up at Nimboida was my um, 36 frame polynukes, the two-way mating nukes, the paradise hives. And I really, you know, apart from the, the loss of the bees up there, I, I really, I really missed that gear and really felt that loss. So um, thankfully, out of that that go for me, I was able to purchase another 30 of them. Um, they're a slightly newer model. Um, so yeah, we'll just go go through them now and have a look and look at the advantages and, and perceived disadvantages, I guess, of, of them. And um, yeah, just I wanna, just wanted to show what, what the money was spent on. So this is your six frame nuke. I've, um, these have been painted with uh, Hames acrylic paint. Um, I'm just so grateful to Hames for, give, for giving me 60 litres of, of paint. Um, it came out of the blue, I just could not believe it. So thank you to Holmes Paints and also Petri Smiter 10 for, for helping out, me out with that, that paint. I've almost used up 30 litres, another 30 litres to go. So it's um, just fantastic paint. Um, so these are the bottoms. Um, they're not much different from the old ones. They've got a bigger surface area here of screen. Uh, and there's a bit of ridging there, which which feels quite flimsy when you um, when it's not assembled. But what I've done is instead of screwing these in these screens, I've just put some silicon around there, up through the middle and around there, and that's made the whole thing really rigid. So we'll see how that stands up over time. Entrance closers here. So the old, if you remember the old ones, they had an entrance closer here and an entrance closer on the, on the other side, on the opposite end. So these are slightly different. They've got openings there. So you can have the hole, you can have the hole for them open if, if you want to at both ends. Or if you've got two three-way nukes, you can just close one up and close the other one up like that. So you can actually have quite restricted entrance there just allowing one bee in and out at a time, which I think is a really good idea. So that's probably an improvement on, on the old ones. So you can close them up like that. Um, so yeah, um, that's quite a good idea, I think. So the high body, not much difference there. There's a little groove down there for the divider to go in, which was the same as the last ones. And they fit on there quite, quite nicely. And of course the lid. Um, 
the owl lids were flat and I think this groove design is a bit of a pain and because I like to ride on my lids there's not much space to ride on and they're a real pain to paint but anyway once they're done they're done I guess so yeah we'll just talk about the dividers so these are made of um, they normally come with the core flute dividers which are just rubbish they buckle and they, they just don't last very long these are um, sign writing board I guess so it's a couple of pieces of aluminium with some foam on the inside um, they're cut with a router I believe and they're, they're precision cut so they just fit down the middle of this hive through that groove fits really snugly and as you can see that divides the hive into, into two three frame nukes so you can also put a feeder on these if I've got two three ways and you want to feed them there's uh, the old feeder that goes on the top um, or if it's a six frame nuke you can pull that out and I tend to put a, um, a one frame internal feeder the man lake internal feeders inside them just to just to keep a new going so so yeah they're the the new six frame paradise six frame nukes all the way from Finland um, be really nice if Hive IQ did something like this I know it's um, takes a lot to set these things up and get them made but gee be great to have a homegrown product like this that we could that we could use these are very popular and they're really useful tools for, for breeding queens and, and, and just making up nukes so there you go so I've come up with what I think is a pretty good idea for hive stands uh, these things are just new on the market they're called tough blocks and they're used for making low profile decks in people's backyards so you can fit um, different size timber bearers depending on which way you turn it you can also put a, a pole up the top which I'm not too worried about but um, I've worked out I've got 2.4 metre stretches of, um, of framing that just goes in these and I can fit four uh, nine frame hives on them two either side with space in the middle so I can work the hives in the middle so um, yeah, I've got the whole apiary set out with these things and I really like them and um, yeah, we'll see how they stand up over time. Certainly these won't rot, um, the, the framing will over time but it's um, yeah, pretty cheap so I'm not too worried about that. Mm -hmm.